Good morning everybody, this is Dear Mama Sal on a very surprisingly chilly Wednesday morning. It is one degree here in southern British Columbia on a beautifully clear day. That would make it 33 degrees in America. Wow. And it's about now that you think maybe I should have put on my winter coat. I don't know why, I didn't think it was quite that cold this morning, but some people listen to the weather forecast before they get in the car and some people don't. Obviously I'm in the latter. Uh, we had um, Remembrance Day yesterday, which would have been Veterans Day I guess in in America. Um, and the question is, what's the difference between Veterans Day and a Memorial Day? And I actually looked that up, and it's quite interesting. So if you don't know it, look it up. There is a difference. I didn't know that. I thought they were one and the same sort of thing, but they're not, of course. Uh, <laughs> so, I took a lazy day yesterday. I um, did next to nothing. I took a day off from just about everything and I obviously needed it. Uh, I watched a couple of movies and I did have plans that I didn't do because I felt pretty exhausted and I know that the subject for this week is who's pressing your buttons. Well. I've got to start this discussion by talking about what I just witnessed on the news this morning. And today, we managed to land the equivalent of a washing machine on a speeding comet. You've heard the faster than a speeding bullet. Well, how about faster than a speeding comet going over 40,000 miles an hour? It took 10 years to get the lander to the comet and they needed to get it right within a thousand feet. Now think about this. <laughs> if you've ever tried to get on or off a moving bus, and I'm thinking really about getting off a moving bus rather than getting on it, but even so, um, you know how difficult that is when you've got two things going at two different speeds. And I couldn't help but think, wow, how much money had they invested? You've got to have a crew of people, a crew of scientists working on it for 10 years, never mind the cost of developing it. By the time it gets to where it needs to go, the technology is 10 years old. Uh, the thing tried to break down before it even got there. It's starting to run out of gas. When I say gas, power. Um, it started to run out of power. So they had to shut it down for 18 months. Otherwise, they wouldn't have had enough power to get it to where it needed to go. <clears throat> I mean, they missed the original comet that they wanted to go on to because of some bad weather. They couldn't get the launcher off in the first place. I mean, this thing was riddled with problems and yet this group of scientists worked their way through them and today landed the washing machine on a comet going 43,000 miles an hour. Now, what has that got to do with who's pressing your buttons, you ask? Everything. First of all, 
I want you to really be aware that in order to imagine even the possibility of sending up a probe and keeping it up going for 10 years, you've got to have vision, excitement, passion, knowledge, you, you name all the factors. And then, somehow or another, you need to keep your mojo going for 10 years. For 10 years, you have to believe this is possible. For 10 years, you need not to give up. For 10 years, you have to stay motivated. Now, I'm pretty sure that some of you have had dreams and schemes that you gave up on in, in moments, never mind years. <laughs> um, and yet these people managed to do that. Can you imagine getting up every morning for 10 years and sitting there in front of a screen with nothing but a series of numbers being fed in all day long and your job is to sit there and make sure that those numbers are the numbers you expect not the numbers you didn't expect. I cannot think of a more mind-numbing thing to do myself. And I think what was really... <laughs> it was really so funny, I mean, if you can think of it as funny, was what a room full of scientists look like when they've achieved a 10-year goal. <laughs> they really, they were so laid back. You know, they spent 10 years trying to achieve this, and they did it. And it was like, yeah, well done. We did good. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I don't know about you, but I'd be popping champagne corks and going insane. No, they were really very laid back. So, the bottom line of this is, they were pressing their own buttons the whole way. Do you think people said to them, oh, you've got to be out of your mind. There's no way you're going to get a landing on a comet. You can imagine that, right? Yeah, right. How, how fast is it going to be going? 43,000 miles an hour? Yeah. So, they're going to have to be pressing their own buttons the whole way. Somebody was... Now, I'm not saying that they're there weren't people there that were motivating them all the time to keep trying and keep doing it and at each failure saying we can do this we can do this we just need to look at it again and that's called a leader I'm not going to say a manager because I've met some pretty negative managers um, but that's a leader that can do that get people to believe again so let's have a look at what happens in the day-to-day. -day. Every morning we get up and we decide how we're feeling in that moment. Now, as I go through this discussion, I want to make quite sure that I am not in any way minimizing those of you who are seriously ill those of you who are in great pain, or those of you who are beyond your um, abilities to create a difference in, in your health. I just want to talk to the general viewership at this point. Because for those of you who don't have those problems, we wake up every morning and we are so tired, or we are, oh God, I don't want to go to work, or we are, you know what I mean, you, 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 we choose the first thought we have in our minds. 
And I think it's the first thing I'd like you to just check in on. What is the first thought you have? Is it... Oh, rats, it's morning already. Or, that was the shortest night I've known. Or, what is it? Because, I'm not, I'm not judging it. <laughs> I want to tell you, you don't want to hear what my first thoughts are some mornings. Um, <laughs> well, you probably do, but I'm not going to tell you. Um, but, <clears throat> because what you're going to think about is, that's your first step. That's the first button you push. And if it is, oh, uh, it's Wednesday, I don't want to go to work. Um, that's pressing a negative button. And the next thing we do is we push the snooze button. The snooze button says, I want to procrastinate about getting up. Another negative. Now, before you think I'm judging anybody, I'm not. I, <laughs> I have my, you're not going to believe this, I have my first alarm set about an hour before I actually need to get up. And I snooze my way through to getting out of bed. And you have no idea how much I can sleep in that hour. <laughs> Even though it's waking me up every five minutes. And literally, I will go fast asleep again and then be woken up again. I go fast asleep again and be woken up again. Amazing. And then let's say, by now I've got a few negative buttons going, right? And then I go into the kitchen and make coffee. Now normally it's a positive. I don't know why making coffee cheers me up. I really do believe that having a coffee is going to wake me up. Therefore, it's a positive button that I push. And I, I know that most mornings I look at the fact that I did not make my lunch to go to work the night before and wish that I had. Negative. So I've pushed another negative button because I've just said I should have. And every time you say I should have, you understand that's a negative. You're beating up on yourself because you didn't. And what if I not only say I should have, but then I find out I've run out of crackers or whatever it is I want to take to work? negative because then you say I should have gone shopping instead of lying around watching movies and so it goes on and think about the buttons that are being pushed now on an average day this is not too serious because I'm gonna get in the car and I'm gonna do a vlog and that's gonna cheer me up no end lots of positive buttons in doing the vlog However, what if on my way to work, something negative happens? What if I were in an accident? Pray God that I won't be. Um, what if I heard on the news that something really terrible happened? I'm already down because of all the negative buttons that I pushed in getting up. And now I hit a major. Now, if I'm in a pretty good space to start with, that's, again, I can probably even cope with a major. I might be s stunned or stressed out a bit, but I can recover. 
what happens to so many people is they are further down the slippery slope than they think they are. And at this time of the year, we have an added disadvantage, a dirty great button that gets pushed, which is called seasonal affective disorder, a lack of sunlight because of the clocks rolling back. So most people who are already struggling to keep their nose above water suddenly find themselves really struggling to keep their nose above water. And quite honestly, I am one of them. I, as, as I've told you, that I suffer from SAD to some degree. I have found that taking vitamin D throughout the year really has helped me. But I, I definitely can feel that I'm a lot more sluggish at the moment than I want to be. And I am also feeling a lot more down. So as I go to work, I'm pretty good. But you understand, if something happens at work, it wouldn't take much to set me off into another quite serious plummet. And then, what if something goes really wrong at work? Hmm. And that could push me down another button. You know what I mean? It could push another button and drop me down a bit more. Now, as long as I'm keeping okay with my ability to bring myself up a notch, it's like taking two steps forward, one back, two steps forward, one back. Now, as long as I can keep doing that, I'm going to be pretty good. The problem comes where you're doing the opposite, where you're taking one step forward and dropping two back. When you're pushing so many negative buttons that you can't push enough positive ones to compensate. Now that's either because you're choosing not to, you know, you don't understand the process so you're letting it run away with you, or that you've lost control. And losing control can be beyond your capability. It's not the Urawas. You could have had a a chemical imbalance start to happen, in which case you, you're going to need some medication to be able to balance it out again. But what I want you to understand is that every day people are pushing our buttons. It can be people giving you a look, people you know just being late when you're a time person. Every day there are people pushing your buttons. If you're normal. And some people just don't feel it, and some people do. So the first question on this subject is, what pushes your buttons, or who? Do you know what or who pushes your buttons? And we're not talking the little stuff, we're talking the big stuff. Because you can probably cope with somebody being late if you're feeling really good, but if you're already feeling a bit and you know, cranky, and then somebody is late, and you're an on-time person, wow, it's amazing what that can do to you. Or what about that you had an expectation of a family member, and they didn't meet it? Or what if somebody promised you that they do X, Y, and Z, and then didn't. If you're in a good place, you can cope with it quite easily. If you're not in a good space to start with, it sucks. It sucks the big time. And tomorrow, what I want to talk about is, we've got a lot of people in the Dear Mama Sal network who are struggling with quite serious stuff. Quite serious, to very severe, 
debilitating pain, debilitating illnesses. mental health issues, you name it. We've got people sitting in all walks of life. And the funny thing is that they manage to actually stay quite chirpy. They seem to manage to hang in there. They have buttons that they're pushing for themselves that are making them, making life tolerable. So if you're hearing this, I really would like some feedback as to what you are doing. What is it that you do to make your day? What is it you think? What, what actions are you taking to cheer yourself up on a daily basis? And the reason I'd ask the viewers um, to do this is because in answering this, you might give somebody else a tip that they haven't thought of. And so the more tips that you can give, the better. Because what we're looking for is how do we help somebody have a better day? We're now up to, we have doubled the temperature here in British Columbia. That's made my day. That's a, definitely a plus button for me. It's now two degrees, which would be 35 for you guys. Well, what a nice, bright, positively balmy, sunshiny day. <laughs> and if I walk really quickly, my little feet will not feel cold. And if I go up the stairs with a little more pep than usual, the blood will be coursing through my veins in such a way that I will give myself extra energy and warmth. This is dear Mama Sal saying thank you so much for being with me on my drive today as I go over the speed bumps.